Welcome back to another episode of Caribbean Dreams TV. Welcome back to another episode of Caribbean Dreams. I am your host, Mr. Welcome back to another episode of Caribbean Dreams. Welcome back to another episode of Caribbean Dreams TV. I am your host, Maurice, Mr. Property John. I've been gone for a minute. Why have I been not posting videos in the last six months? I'm here to tell you why. And then hopefully we'll get back on schedule of posting our videos that has helped so many people, not only in St. Vincent, but all across the world, buying property here in our lovely island. All right, so what happened? Well, long and short of the story is, six months ago, I got a letter from the income tax department and that letter broke my spirit. Let's talk about it. All right, so to understand why this letter broke my spirit, we have to go all the way back a few years. I've said before in previous videos, I started this idea for Caribbean Dreams when I was at UWE. I came home from UWE and in 2013, I registered the business name. I used a colleague of mine, a good friend, to design all of the elements, the logo, the look, the feel. But I never started this business until the end of 2015. I was working in Canawan and I had a terrible experience with uh, some foreign folks. I came up and I decided to start this business. So I came back up from Canawan and I started working with my dad doing valuations. Um, this has been, for years I've been, I was doing valuation with that. Almost every summer, when you want summer money, you have to come and do some valuations. When you're going to school on the afternoon time, before you reach home, book it show he has some kind of valuation job that he has to do. So you have to drive to some property and I was the one that will go out, help him with pulling the measurements, um, understanding the nature of the business. So when I came back from Canawan, in 2015, I slotted into the business and started full-time helping him doing valuation. That was my main job. And then my side job was building this brand that you know as Kyrie Dreams. So why is this important? Because along the way, my dad got an opportunity to leave St. Vincent to go to Antigua to work. And it was my responsibility to keep the business going. So I manage the evaluations. I do all of the legwork. I write up the reports, send it to him. He will look them over, make sure that I did everything I was supposed to do. Then he will sign off on it. And then in June of 2019, we got a call from one of his colleagues in Antigua saying, that he was found unconscious in the parking lot of his workplace. And by September, we were burying my dad. How did that happen? I found out, my dad, my mom kind of knew, but dad had cancer and he made that decision to go to Antigua to get more opportunities um, for his family. But he was fighting cancer using his diet and exercise while working in Antigua. So, what is the aftermath of finding out all of this information within a short space of time, the father that you knew and worked with and built a career with was basically gone. What are the aftermaths? When you think about it, you know, we have to do videos about some of the topics that I'm going to touch on. When the body's in the ground, you ask some key questions. Does that have insurance? Yes, that has insurance. Where is this insurance? With Clico. Really? Clico went under. When you go to the bank, the mortgage on the house, was the mortgage insured? No, it was not. So here was I, 
my main job gone because I did not have the certificates that he had, so I couldn't continue doing valuations. And my side job, which is Caribbean Dreams, which I've been nurturing from 2016 to 2019, is hemorrhaging money because a startup, everybody knows, a startup business, you do not make a profit in the first three to four years. So I was making money and investing it in the business to grow the business. I started that business at 27. Now, if you understand the real estate in St. Vincent, there are no, well, I, I don't know for now, but when I started, there were no 27 year olds doing real estate. Most people in the industry was at least, at minimum, 10 years older than I was. And if you understand the concept of buying property, you're buying a one-time purchase. Are you going to give a 27-year-old, unless he's very good at his job, a property to sell for you? And would you buy from that person? I had to work my way into people's minds. I had to prove myself before I was able to actually get the business to where it, 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 where it is today. So, my first year of operating, I sold one property. One property. My second year, I did a little better. I think I sold maybe about four properties. But every single year up until 2020, Caribbean Dreams made a loss. Now, in my mind, you're operating a business, which was not at the time your full main business. Nobody's thinking about income tax when you are literally taking your salary and the profits that you're making to pump it back into the business so that it can grow and flourish. Because I look at my business as a tree and I want to water the roots as much as possible so that my, maybe my, the next generation could really benefit from my effort. And for me, I live a very simple life. You will not find me on a Saturday night, every Saturday night, eating out, or you won't find me traveling the world, or you won't find the luxuries here. I live a very simple life and I invest heavily into the Caribbean Dreams brand. So, emotionally, in 2019, I took a, in, a really hard hit. So, me and my wife, we both have businesses that we operate. And if you understand how businesses work, you don't get days off. You don't get many days off. Because if you don't produce, you don't eat. This is not a um, cushy monthly salary that you could take some emotional days off and your salary is guaranteed. And the reality of the situation was for us, not only did my dad have cancer and died, the very, my wife's mother also was fighting cancer. So as soon as burial, we have to now switch focus onto her, who was also battling cancer. Not only that, you have to be spending months of spending your savings trying to help the father that just died. Not only that, you have to then switch over to a mom that is also battling cancer. You have to travel to the U.S. because she was into the, uh, in the U.S. You have to go up to the U.S. My wife went up at the time she was pregnant. So you have to be battling all of those emotional waves to try to stabilize yourself and two businesses. So one, your business isn't profitable and you're pumping money to, to, to build it and build it. You're barely pushing through the air, but you're sticking to the focus in your mind that this seed that you keep watering will grow. And then within all of that, you have the emotional trauma of dealing with your parents back to back at the same time battling cancer. 
So now, six months ago, when I received the letter that I owed the government close to a hundred thousand dollars, that broke my spirit. Understanding, and, and it's my fault. I didn't report my taxes, but you're thinking to yourself, I ain't even making the money. I'm making losses up until 2020 because I'm significantly making investments. The reason why you're seeing the ads and the, and the, the videos is because it is an investment into a brand that you will hope that will grow and grow and grow. So that letter, when I sat in the office and I opened a letter, it broke my spirit literally broke my spirit because I thought to myself the sacrifices that I would have been making over the years spirit. because I'm thinking to myself if I can't fight this I have three loans investment investment um, projects I understand how the system works your accounts could be frozen you could end up in having to foreclose and all of the hard work that I would have put in over the years, the sacrifices that I would have put in over the years, the delay of enjoying life and basically putting your emotions and your grievings on pause because you understand that if you take too much time to grieve, you could literally be underwater. And then we're in St. Vincent. St. Vincent is not exactly the land of milk and honey. So all of these factors broke my spirit and I regressed into myself and boy, it trying to make videos and being Mr. Property, just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I could not get in front of a camera and just smile and be happy. Now, thankfully, I was, now, thankfully, I studied IT. So the, the very foundation of Caribbean Dreams is set in technology. So all of our systems are online. All of our payments are done online in terms of how our expenses are done. So I was able to, in that very day, I was able to go back and get all of my receipts from since I started the business. I met with the folks at at the income tax department, very nice people. I hired a accountant, which my friend um, recommended, and I was able to present my case, and that almost $100,000 of debt turned into just under $5,000. But even though that was resolved, my spirit was still broken. But who cries over spill mix? Still so six months has passed and now I'm really feeling myself getting back to myself. So I'm saying all of this to say when I meet people and they ask, why aren't you doing videos? And I just say, boy, the time, the time. And when people message me from online, I say, I'm not seeing your videos. What happened? What happened? This is the reason why. But have no fear, I will be back with videos and I will try to do at least two videos per month. Our next video is centered around foreclosure, understanding the foreclosure market, why people go into foreclosure and what you can do to avoid foreclosure and also how can you capitalize on the foreclosure market to buy property. This has been a little update video from Mr. Property. So, all right, folks, Mr. Property is back. See you in the next video.